Well, hey, welcome to Inside Redemption. My name is Luke Simmons. I'm one of the pastors at Redemption Gateway, and I'm here today with some of my fellow lead pastors, Wayne Winner from Redemption Alhambra, Josh Butler from Redemption Tempe, and Chris Amaro from Redemption West Mesa. And today, guys, we're talking about the beauty and the challenges that come with being a diverse church. Redemption is a diverse church, and it's interesting because I'll sometimes get calls from people who are curious about how we're doing multi-congregational stuff and how we're structured and how it all works. And one of the things I'll often tell them is I'll say, listen, one of the most amazing parts about redemption is how diverse it is. It's also one of the most challenging parts. A lot of multi-site churches are pretty homogenous. One congregation looks like the others. It's really not that way in redemption. There's different sizes. There's different contexts. There's different uh, ethnic makeups. There's different ages. All sorts of diversity in it. And so in a world that just loves to talk about diversity but doesn't really have many of the resources to really achieve that dream. We feel like between just knowing who God is and what he's done in the gospel, we've got some amazing resources. So we want to talk about that today. So Wayne, you've been kind of leading our pastors through some just reflection theologically on who God is yeah, and how um, unity and diversity really are found in God himself. Absolutely. I mean, just you know, when people look at the church, the hope is that what they they get a glimpse of what they see is is God mm. working in and through the church. And when we think about that, we see God displaying Himself in, in Scripture in these uniquely diverse ways. But at the same time, they're 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 one, mm. right? Uh, we you know we see the Father, we see the Son, we see the Spirit, and at the same time. We're talking about one God. We're not talking about three different gods. Right. But in this, there are just unique ways that that God is, is functioning as the Spirit, functioning as the Son, functioning as the Father while all being united together. And then we being His church, we being um, his, his bride, His children— Reflecting all the DNA of what we see in in in, in Dad, reflecting yeah. all of that in its in its diversity. Yeah, so, you've you've used three words that have just been so helpful for me and kind of yeah. hanging on to just who God is yeah. as a triune God, that He's distinct, and equal, and one. Yeah, help us think through those terms. Yeah, well, well, in in God's distinctness that you see with the the, the spirit, what you see with the son, um, and his distinctness that you see with the father, um, this is you, this further distinctness in how he's created all of us, mm-hmm. you know, um, personality wise, gifting wise, um, that reflects that same distinctness that's going on and reflecting that same same depth, and at the same time. Equal, the mm-hmm. the uh, the father was pointing to the son, the son t- pointing to the spirit, the spirit pointing back to the son, and equality is not something to be grasped for because the reality of equality is yeah, there. Yeah, Jesus isn't any less God yes. than the father or the spirit. They're equal. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, you know, and they're one. And they're one. Right, right. United together as one, one God, mm. one people, and and, and 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 that's what you see with, with us, one, the reflection of this one God in all these unique and diverse ways. So even though the world wants to act like diversity is some new fad, it's just kind of part of who we are as being made in the image of God. Mm. And it feels like we just have these incredible resources to pursue yeah. it, especially with the gospel. Josh, will you reflect on that? How does the gospel give us a unique ability to pursue yeah. the best kind of diversity. Totally. We see that played out in the gospel where in the New Testament we find that God's kingdom, it's one kingdom, mm. but with every nation, tribe, and tongue. That the church is one body, but with many parts that need one another, many members. Mm. We find the church is animated by one spirit, but expressing himself through a variety of gifts and distinct contributions that people bring. And so we see that univer- unity and diversity is central to the identity of the church as God's people. Uh, and one of the things that has been striking for me when you talk to early early church historians who look at kind of the growth of the early church, they say one of the things that was most distinctive was in Roman society at the time, society was very homogenous. Like if you were in this class, in this gender, this group, like you you hung out, that's who you hung out with. And so one of the most controversial or uh, upending things the early church did was meals together where you had people from Jew and Gentile, male and female, slave and free, folks who never would have associated with one another were now eating together with equality, diversity, distinction, together around the table and how that was revolutionary Mm -hmm. and actually had a transformative, it was like that leaven in the dough that over time had this transformative effect. But at the center, I think, was going in a world that is pulling 
itself apart in so many directions, what does it look like to stay at the table together mm. and to be at the table together? And when, and a table me- that Christ sets. And yeah. meals just, that feels like real. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's not like you're just posting stuff about diversity. It's yeah. like you're living it. It feels gritty and real and a oh. shared table. That's awesome. That, that is the best. Yeah. You yeah. get the good food. <laughs> yeah, right? good food. <laughs> I'm saying that. Yeah, yeah, the laughter, the conversation, yeah. the stories, the weeping together when you're going through hard times together, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, that that being in life together as people. Yeah. Well, I, I think even about like the kingdom gospel and we see in the end, in Revelation 7, 9, where every tribe, tongue, and nation come before the throne of God be and worship together, mm-hmm. right? And that's like this, this glimpse of the final restoration when God makes all things new. And as God's kingdom people now, right, we get to represent God's kingdom and even give a foretaste and a preview of how it's going to be. And so mm-hmm. when we enter into you know racial unity and and diversity and loving our neighbor, it's just a it's giving the world a glimpse of the way it's supposed to be and the way it's going to be. Yeah. yeah, you know. Well, and when we talk about wanting to be a diverse family of congregations, that doesn't mean that each congregation is going to look the same, right? right. Uh, right. Some congregations are going to be diverse more on the basis of age, others more on the basis of economic status, others mm-hmm. on the basis of race. We're not looking for a uniform kind of diversity, yeah. um, but man, it really is beautiful. Um, when we see these tastes of the kingdom. So I'd be curious from your guys' perspective, whether it's thinking about your local congregation or just what you've experienced in redemption, how have you tasted some of the beauty of this God-designed and gospel-fueled diversity? I know, I know one, one way that, that I've tasted it um, at, a, at a broader level hmm. Is because is is being able to to learn from a different context inside of a way that helps me to see the gospel broader and bigger, you know. Where probably inside of my own context, I'm seeing all the implications of the gospel that are from from the things that I particularly have to deal with, so they stand out more. But then I'm, I'm around someone from a different context, same gospel, and you start to see these implications, and then and the things that I'm, I'm learning there from a different congregation that's not going through some of the things that I may be going through, this thing that I'm learning here also impacts how I how I lead there mm-hmm. because it, it's giving me just broader lenses. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the things that I find just like beautiful and benefiting um, is, is, is that we get to learn from, from one another and how God is uniquely teaching the other and it's more than just for the other, it's for the whole, right? Mm, I, yeah, I agree with that. You know, I see you guys almost every week at our preaching collective <laughs> where we're working through the passages that we're all preaching and man, I, I just learned so much from you and um, from the rest of the folks in that room and I feel like I always walk away with things that I wouldn't have thought about or, or discovered on my own. Definitely, because I think each of our contexts is so different, you know, so I'm in Tempe where ASU, a lot of college students, we have our demographic is a lot of college students, you know, and people from GCU and and, and that demographic. And knowing that like that's very different from a lot of the demographic at Alhambra, at Gateway, at West Mesa. Uh, But when we come together as leadership and being part of just all of redemption, I felt it's so powerful because it's, like you said, generally when we're studying a passage, we come to the same conviction on, okay, here's exegetically what we feel like God's saying in this passage, but how does that flesh itself out in our various contexts, finding like, yeah. that's actually yeah. different. And learning as a pastor, I think with a, a vision of for the kingdom in the city through mm-hmm. relationship with what yeah. God's doing in different congregations, in different contexts across the broader Phoenix area mm-hmm. has been just massive. I feel like it's shaped me and made mm-hmm. me a better pastor. I think it's shaped what's happening at Tempe in a much better way to have a, a vision that's bigger than our own little neck of the woods, you know? Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. Over the years, being at Redemption West Mesa and being, a, you know, we got a, we're a multi-ethnic church. We have a, a bilingual service. And even myself not really being like at the beginning, really excited about doing bilingual, but, uh, I've got to see the the beauty of of learning from, uh, you know, people that are even different than me. I'm I'm Mexican American, and there's a, a lot of diversity within, uh, you know, when you would say you know Mexican, I'm Mexican American, and the first generation, 
to the fourth generation, there's just a huge mm. amount of difference. Yeah. And so I— You've got all that in your congregation. Yeah, I'm, I'm fourth generation Mexican-American. My my grandparents lived here. My great-grandparents lived here. They all speak uh, spoke English fluently. And, you know, but I just grew up thinking, hey, I'm, I'm Mexican. Hmm. And then I get in community with people that are from Mexico, and I, and I realize— they don't see me as Mexican as I, I thought it was, right? <laughs> that, and uh, and I, I see how American I was, Americanized I was and the individualistic kind of culture that I grew up in and then seeing a real familial culture hmm. has been just mind-blowing just to see people so close and, and loving each other and the community and the hmm. doing life. I think it's really helped, you know, shape me, even me just being exposed to people hmm. That look like me, but are co- even culturally different than me. Yeah. So this is all real kumbaya now, right? <laughs> yeah. This is God. It's yeah. in God, and it's in the gospel. And look at all these blessings. But I mean, if we just talk turkey and be honest, it's painful, mm. right? It would be a lot simpler if everybody looked the same, if everybody thought the same, if everybody came from the same traditions and theological backgrounds. Um, but we don't. So what are some of the what are some of the challenges? What are some of the pain points that you uh, see that you experience through this process? One of the challenges that comes to mind for me is if we just kind of zoom out nationally, our bigger cultural context right now, it feels like things are so polarized and the boundary lines are so set and things are so extreme that um, often if you say something that you think you're saying this, but like right. people over here think you're saying this and oh, people yeah. over here think you're saying this. Yeah. So one of the challenges has been, I think, people reading into, I, I've experienced people uh, reading into things more than what I or we intended. So two quick examples, you know, on one end we had someone on our campus kind of going, dude, why do you guys have all these All Lives Matter signs all over your campus? You know, and we're like, what All Lives Matter signs? Yeah, you guys have put up big billboards, All Lives Matter all over your campus. We're like, did we get tagged, you know? Did someone graffiti? Like, where, where is it? Can you go show us? Can you go show us? And it's our vision statement that we had for a decade or, you know, like, all of life is all for Jesus. And they heard that and they thought we were saying all of life. And we're like, dude, you're you're reading into it, you know? And then on the other end, you know, one of the pastors uh, using the term uh, progressive sanctification and a message, one, you know, kind of this idea that we become holy over time. It's not overnight. We grow in holiness over time. Uh, but someone heard that and said, why are you saying if I'm growing in holiness, I'm going to become more progressive politically? You know, and, and just going like, so I think one of the challenges I've found has been uh, the challenge that in this highly, you know, kind of tense moment, right, like, right. cultural mm-hmm. polarization, uh, that it, there's a tendency to read more into something mm-hmm. than necessarily what's being said. And so the challenge of communication, uh, both within as a pastor at our mm-hmm. congregation, and then broadly mm-hmm. when you think of the diversity of our right, congregations, right, how do we right, communicate right. in a way where different audiences are going to tend to hear things with kind of a different yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. lens. Well, One of the things that I think we all do is that we assume that whatever's normal for us is normal for everybody. And pretty soon what's normal actually becomes you start to think of it as right and as better. And you start to really kind of think that people who don't see it the same way you do are not just different, but they're actually weird or even worse, they're wrong just because they see it differently. You know, I was at this Asian market with my family the other day and, you know, to my kids, Safeway is normal and this Lily's Asian market in Chandler is not normal for them. And they were kind of walking around and seeing fish heads and seeing all kinds of interesting fruits and vegetables that they're not used to seeing, you know, and, and the tendency for them and for all of us is to go, ah, that's weird. That's bad. That's not good. Uh, but really to say, you know what, we just have different uh, senses of what's normal. And so I think one of the challenges when you think about being in a diverse church is just realizing we're all coming to this thing with different expectations of what's normal. And learning to appreciate and love those differences is is not always so easy. Yeah. I'd say one of the challenges is uh, social media. Hmm. Uh, we've had people post hateful things, you know, hmm. anti-immigrant type of things. And... Uh, and I, I just, I go and have a conversation, you know, like, hey, man, do you, you realize, like, when you post that, like, on Sunday, you're going to be sitting next to someone mm-hmm. who is an immigrant, who potentially is even undocumented. And what you said about them mm-hmm. is not even true, that they're more prone to crime or, you know, all these just weird statistics and 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 uh, having to have that conversation, the uncomfortableness of that conversation, and and then, you know, having people they just leave, yeah, you know, they're just not willing to stick it through. Just well, all right, you know, in 2016 we had a 
we had started an English service and that cre just created more problems for us than anything because mm -hmm. it kind of attracted a crowd that was probably uh, not on board with us, who we were as a church and and where we were going and serving immigrants and, and, and blessing our community and, mm -hmm. and uh, basically just once that election rolled in, mm -hmm. I mean, everyone eventually just left. As soon as we did anything bilingual, they were, they were gone, yeah. you know? Yeah, and like there's not a problem with having different perspectives or ideas on policy and all that, but the way that we communicate with one another is the body of Christ when it's mm -hmm. hateful speech. Like the Bible has a lot to say about how we communicate in a Christ-like charitable way. Yeah, um, one of the challenges of, of being in a diverse church, both locally and a diverse church just redemption-wide, is just the reality that we are living in a, a, a time and, and culture where where um, people aren't um, allowing themselves to be pastored locally, mm -hmm. but instead they are being pastored by all these other different streams of thought, mm -hmm. all these other different streams of idolatry and different streams of things that that ultimately work against the gospel, mm -hmm. right? So it becomes difficult to hold on to the gospel the way mm -hmm. that we should. There, there continues to be this, this, this challenge, what, what Chris says about sticking at the table through it all, like mm -hmm. the gospel winning the day, yeah. right? Like, okay, we, Jesus is, is is God and we're trusting him, mm. you know, so we're going to walk through this and knowing that as we're walking through this, that um, things get messy, things get painful, things hurt, but we're trusting Jesus and the gospel wins, mm. right? So that becomes yeah. a challenge where other things win the day other than the gospel winning mm. the day yeah. and then having to go in and help people to see like at some level or another you've been co-opted by the idols of culture. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to draw you back into the gospel, but you think those idols are gospel. Well, right? and one of the idols, if we're honest, is diversity. Yeah. Diversity yeah. itself can become this idol that everyone wants to pursue for its own sake. Yeah. And we say, no, we, we don't want to pursue diversity for its own sake. We want yeah. to pursue diversity because of what it says, yes. the witness that it is mm. to Jesus of what he and he alone can do. You know, I, I kind of have this dream of my kids who aren't yet in college, but uh, man, it'll be soon. They'll mm -hmm. uh, maybe be that age. And, and I just imagine them in a place where people are going, man, we just, we want to see different kinds of people get along. We want to see diversity. And I'd love my kids to be able to go, you want to see diversity? Come to Redemption Church. Right. We'll give you a picture of what that looks like. And you'll see that the only way that this is actually possible is through Christ yeah. and through what he does. Yeah, and one of the things I love to imagine is just wondering what the campfire conversations were like for Jesus and his disciples mm -hmm. after a day of ministry, all that. Because you look at Jesus and he calls together like a tax collector mm -hmm. and a zealot to be mm -hmm. part of his disciples, you know? and mm -hmm. Knowing who those were back in the day, like the tax collector, they were like, they represented the man, like the system, the structure, yes. that, that kind of thing, you know? And the zealots were like, they were like the revolutionary. They wanted to burn the whole thing down and overturn it and whatever. And um, they didn't stay there, you know, but Jesus calls them in. And it felt like, dude, you're calling like the Occupy Wall Street dude and the Wall Street CEO. <laughs> you know, like you're calling in like the Antifa person and a Proud Boy or something. And you're bringing them into this process of discipleship. Mm. And it's not overnight. Like, it's going to be yeah. messy for a while, you know? Mm. And just wondering, like, dude, Jesus' disciples, he brings together the tax collector and the zealot and the fisherman and the rough around the edges and this like, kind of motley crew that we are. We're, yeah, disciples of Jesus. We're a motley crew, you know? And, and <laughs> Jesus, yeah, but he's patient with us. And that, that question for me, though, has been how do we stay at the table together. Like, we're all going to come in with our leanings, with our perspectives, with backdrops, but I think part of the challenge of diversity is when we put Jesus first, how do we stay at the table together even when yeah. we, you know, uh, yeah, have the hard about, conversations? Like uh, when uh, Paul had to oppose Peter, yeah. right, because he left the table. Mm. Yeah. And so when yeah, Paul yeah. saw what he had done, he opposed Peter and 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 called him to repent, to come well, back to the table. And what I love about that is he doesn't say, Peter, Peter, you're breaking the racism rule. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. He says, Peter, you're not walking in line with the truth of the gospel. Mm. Yes. And it yeah. is the gospel yeah. that holds us together. And so, brothers, I, I love you yeah. guys. It's fun to be together, to do this work together. I do think someone's going to watch us and go, diversity. You guys all have beards. This isn't that diverse. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah. But, uh, man, it's fun to be together. Beard and uh, I, I just love hearing your hearts. And, and uh, I hope you, as you watch, just will join us in praying that we embody uh, the fruits of the gospel as we seek to pursue uh, Christ-likeness and 
unity and diversity. So, laugh. Love you guys.